Welcome to the Human Nature Channel. I'm your host, Alex Tam Sula, also known as Daddy Baby on Twitter. And what am I doing here? Well, I'm recycling old videos. I'm doing my part for the environment. I have another YouTube channel. It's called Movie That's So Groovy with Alex. It was my first channel. Originally, I wanted to do movie reviews because I just got tons and tons of movies and I've seen hundreds of thousands of movies in my life. I thought it would be a nice fit. I learned a lot doing that channel. One thing I learned was to be careful that you don't get too ambitious too fast, which is what happened here. And the concept kind of ran out of steam. But I had a lot of fun doing those videos. And there is one video in particular that I'm very happy with. It was my review of the movie Rocket Ship XM with Lloyd Bridges. I like it for a number of different reasons. One was uh, it got 572 views as of me checking this morning, which meant, oh, you know, a lot of people checked it out. But the other reason I like this video is because it was the most ambitious editing project I ever put before myself up to that point and learned a lot learned a lot on what I can get away with with editing what's available even learned a big way to screw up to explain this quickly if I have video files in my camera and transfer them over to my computer they go into a source file okay and then I open up my video editor and I import those source files. But you got to keep in mind, those aren't copies, okay? What you've just done is opened up a different window on those source files. So what happens is if you, you know, close out of the editor and then go to the source files and erase them all, because, oh, look at all this stuff, what a mess. And then go back in the editor, you're going to find chunks of video missing. And I remember the first time that happened, and I literally went into shock. I'm like... That was just 12 hours worth of work. Where did it all go? Well, fortunately, I was able to repair what had gone wrong quite easily. So, yeah, um, editing is what I love to do. I mean, when it comes to the process of making a video, and there's a number of different steps, there's the editing process. I love it. Uh, I'll tell you what, <laughs> if I had a job just editing other people's videos, 12 hours a day, I'd be thrilled. Editing and me, I love it. It's fun. And one of the reasons I took to it as quickly as I did was I did computer-aided drafting for 12 years. And I'm pretty good with graphics packages. I can usually sit down and if you put one in front of me, I can pretty much figure out how to do something pretty quick. Well, that's what happened when I got my editing software. Uh, in two days, I was editing my very first video, The Two Faces of Dr. Jekyll. I'm just like, well, I figured it out. I figured it out. I was like, yeah, I, I went through it, did the video, had it on. Like, and in two days, I had it uploaded, and I was uh, really thrilled. So, in a way, this video is kind of my resume. There's people out there who shoot videos, and they hate to edit. They just, you know, it's the worst part. I'm your guy. My email is down in the notes. If you want to talk turkey, have a good one. Enjoy the video. Greetings, friends. Welcome to an edition of Movie That's So Groovy. Movies that put a smile on my face. Gems you may have missed. I'm your host, Alex, and today's feature up for review is... Five seconds. Four. Three. Two. One, zero. Rocket Ship XM, starring Lloyd Bridges, Noah Barry, John Emery, Osa Masson, Hugh O'Brien, directed by Kurt Newman, 1950. From our jaded perspective of 2017, this early 50s sci-fi adventure is pretty silly. But before America's Mercury program turned space flight into a reality, imaginations ran wild. And in this scenario, the plan is to send the first humans into space and straight for the moon. 
orbiting the Earth first to see if we can put a man up there and get him back down. That's for sissies. Here we see Project Director Ekstrom describing a rocket going straight up in the air and then making a right turn. They say science fiction is meant to amaze and rocket ship XM makes my jaw drop. Woo. So four men and a woman are to be, if I understand this correctly, the first living anything into space. And as I said before, they're heading to the moon. Maybe. Lloyd Bridges is the pilot, Colonel Floyd Graham. Noah Barry is Major Will Corrigan, the engineer who hails from Texas and likes his harmonica. If you don't mind. Screen thespian John Emery is Dr. Carl Ekstrom, and Osa Masson is his assistant, Dr. Lisa Van Horn, two characters who would have been hoary old cliches even in some 1930s science fiction pulp magazine. Their clash over the correct fuel calculations foreshadows the troubles that lie ahead. And Hugh O'Brien, in his first screen appearance, is the astronomer Harry Chamberlain, who may or may not have the right stuff. After a close call with a storm of meteors that look like crumpled balls of aluminum foil, it's pretty clear to everybody that Harry could use some spine. Maybe it'd have been better if one of them had struck the ship. At least have been sudden. Quick. Get hold of yourself, man. We'll get through this. Although the story is a god-awful mess, from a screenplay held together with scotch tape, chewing gum, and spit, Rocket Ship XM is still a pretty slick piece of movie making, as well as a Cold War era film that doesn't mention the Cold War even once, although they do toss in a bit of the old we are not alone paranoia. Maybe somebody don't want us to get where we aim to get. It works well as a piece of entertainment as long as you shut your brain off. Like in this little geography lesson. That's Africa down there, Will, not Texas, an easy mistake to make from outer space. Or this bit of wisdom where Dr. Ekstrom uses a pencil to demonstrate the correct way to land a rocket. We wouldn't want people to think landing nose first was a good idea. At some point, I should mention rocket ship XM gets knocked off course and this out of control rocket goes to Mars. Mars. What do you know? Could happen. Shot in just 18 days and rushed into theaters less than a month before the big budget George Powell Robert Heinlein collaboration, Destination Moon, Rocket Ship XM is truly the first journey in the space movie of the post World War II era. Not only did it beat the Russians into space, it beat science fiction grandmaster Heinlein to the box office, no small feat. Produced, written, and directed by Kurt Newman, who would go on to direct Vincent Price in the sci-fi horror classic The Fly, Rocket Ship XM had two other uncredited writers. One was Orville H. Hampton, and the other happened to be Dalton Trumbo, Hollywood screenwriter blacklisted for his communist sympathies, who, in order to put food on the table, took speed, drank scotch, and worked on B-movie scripts under a pen name, all while sitting in his bathtub. Boy, that explains a lot. According to Wikipedia sources, Trumbo wrote the Mars sequence where the crew finds the remains of an ancient civilization destroyed by atomic war and reduced to caveman status. You see, the Cold War is represented here, but you have to look really close. So landing on the Red Planet, our intrepid explorers leave their rocket ship to explore different ways of ripping off Ray Bradbury, and they discover buildings apparently destroyed by the bomb, if the Geiger counter is to be believed. Then they encounter cave Martians, mutant descendants of an ancient race reduced to wearing furs, fang necklaces, and carrying spears, all while running around to a musical score like something edited together from a hundred different Warner Brothers cartoons. And though our crew is armed with pistols and thunder sticks, the cave Martians throw rocks and the occasional stone axe, sending our heroes running back to the rocket where they blast off as fast as they can. A sad day for the U.S. space program, if you ask me. And in regard to this movie sometimes being described as sexist, where Dr. Van Horn has her mini meltdown and then apologizes, Ekstrom says, What? For momentarily being a woman? It's worth mentioning that Dr. Van Horn got the fuel numbers right. Before somebody starts complaining, there's your girl power. So to sum it all up, Rocket Ship XM does have a subversive edge to it, and it gives you a Martian tiki head that makes a sound when you hit it, a Martian woman with cataracts who screams really loud 
and Major Corrigan getting his heart broken one more time. Sorry to disappoint you, Bill. We have atmosphere here. We won't need pressure suits. Just watching this thing, you can almost feel one screenwriter handing the script to the next saying, you do something with this. Still, I recommend this movie. Because somehow, someway, it became the cinematic equivalent of a loaded baked potato. And if there is one reason to watch, it's just to remind us how good Lloyd Bridges was. Even though he's in a piece of exploitation slapped together in under three weeks aiming to cash in on somebody else's movie, Lloyd really sells the character. Good job, Lloyd. No, gentlemen. The flight of the RXM was not a failure. Excuse me. I have to take this. Hello?